This podcast is brought to you by impact.com. Impact.com is the world's leading partnership management platform. Are you looking for new ways to acquire new customers? Impact.com can help you drive revenue through partnerships with publishers, creators, or other brands. Visit impact.com today. People don't understand that you have to talk to your publishers regularly to get the coverage you want. More often than not, brands are kind of throwing the affiliate program at somebody in marketing who might not know anything about it. You're listening to the Affiliate Marketing Podcast brought to you by affiversemedia.com, the chapter and verse of everything you need to know about running a successful affiliate program for your business. Now, here's your award-winning affiliate and performance marketing host and industry veteran, your affiliate marketing guide and the founder of Affiverse, Leanne Johnston. While everyone else is busy chasing the latest social media trends, forward-thinking marketers are already preparing for the next evolution in affiliate partnerships, and we're about to let you in on the secrets too. In this episode of the Affiliate Marketing Podcast, I'm sitting down with Cody Joy, the innovative force behind Impact.com's Partnerships Experience Academy to decode the future of affiliate marketing. In this episode, Cody reveals a surprising insight, the often neglected engagement phase that could be your secret weapon for exponential program growth. She explains why mastering the skill now could set you up for unparalleled success and shares insider knowledge on everything from navigating the content-driven landscape to thriving in emerging pay-to-play environments. Plus, Cody lets us in on a little-known tool that's revolutionizing how top marketers compensate their partners. It's really a game-changer that could transform your entire affiliate strategy. The future of affiliate marketing is unfolding, and you're about to get a front-row seat. Welcome to this week's Affiliate Marketing Podcast with me, your host, Leanne Johnston. And today I'm joined by Cody Joy, the Head of Partnerships Education at Impact.com. Cody, it's a pleasure to have you on this podcast today. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat. Yeah, me too. So I wanted to kind of kick off this podcast by just letting you tell a little bit about yourself, a little bit how you landed up at Impact and a little bit about how you started building the PXA. Academy and also why is it called PXA? Because I get asked that a lot. So maybe shed a little bit of light about the naming and how it started and what the idea was and how you landed up being there. Yeah. So it's a very long winding road, as I think it is for most people in affiliate. None of us, I don't think, mean to get here, you know? So I actually wanted to be in radio in college. Okay. And I quickly realized those jobs are far and few between. So yeah. I pivoted to, I thought, you know, marketing will be fun-ish. And so I fell into influencer marketing, actually, right out of college. Mm -hmm. And then sort of parlayed that to, there was a a job posting at Levi's and it was for an affiliate coordinator. I had no idea what affiliate was. I just knew I love Levi's. I'd like to work there. And influencer experience is one of the requirements. So I will apply. Imagine my shock when I got the job and had to learn what affiliate was. But I quickly realized it was something I wanted to pursue. The human interaction aspect is surprising, I think, or was. And I just really love being able to work with people and the whole sort of community aspect of it. It's such a small sort of industry where everybody bounces around and we all sort of know each other now. And I really enjoy that. And and being able to sort of look at it also from a PR lens, I really enjoy, but we'll get into that in a bit. But when it comes to PXA, I've been working with Impact as long as I had been with Levi's or and beyond. So yeah. I was super familiar with the software. I'm biased now, but I wasn't before. It was always my favorite. And so when this role came up, it felt like, you know, the perfect place for me to be able to teach people what I've learned along the way and also kind of bring back what I wanted to do originally with life, which was mm-hmm. be in front of a camera on a microphone. And now I get to do that in sort of a different way teaching people about partnerships marketing, which is really serendipitous. It's PXA, the Partnerships Experience Academy, which is a mouthful. So that's why we we hate PXA, but it is the Partnerships Experience Academy. I'm not entirely sure how we landed on that name, but it is the name and we love it. So what I loved about that story, and 
it's a kind of recurring theme on anybody that comes onto the affiliate marketing podcast is that everybody falls into this industry by accident and then they end up loving it. So if you're new and you're listening to this podcast and you're wondering about partnerships and affiliate marketing, we're happy to have you here. You're probably never going to leave us. So let's get into the nitty gritty because I wanted to get into what the PXA was designed, like who it's designed for and what it's all about. So the training program really offers a diverse range of affiliate modules and you can choose which modules you want to take. There's like a learning journey that you can go through as well. But how did you define the six sort of phases of the training journey for affiliate managers to follow? Because for people tuning into this podcast, you know, they might be a little bit new to the industry, but how did you categorize the learning journey and talk us through what those six phases are? That's a great question. So it really kind of was birthed out of the way our product works and the way that we built the product to suit affiliate programs. The way that we sort of defined this path is to help you on the endless flywheel continue to scale and grow your program. So the phases are discover and recruit, contract and pay, track, engage, protect and monitor, and optimize. So the way that we think about it is you start your program by recruitment, right? You need to find the right partners that fit your brand to work with you, get them in the program, and get them up to speed. Then you need to figure out how to pay them according to the type of partner that they are and what the partnership requires and all that negotiation, then you have to make sure you're tracking them so that you're making sure everything is going according to plan and everything's tracking properly. And then you're engaging with them to continue that promotion and to get them up to speed with what messaging you have and how you want the brand spoken about and that kind of thing. You also then need to be have protections in place for your program to make sure mm-hmm. that they're following any restrictions that you've set, that your TM Plus program is protected if you're running one or that nobody's bidding if you aren't, that there's no fraudulent orders coming through, things like that. And then lastly, you optimize, take a look at what you've learned over the course of however many months and do it all over again in an endless flywheel that doesn't end. But it's always something different. And that's why it's sort of a flywheel because it doesn't, you don't want it to end. You want to continue recruiting, continue off. Things change with brands all the time. The landscape's changing all the time. So it's not There's a very common misconception that affiliates should be set it and forget it. Absolutely not. It takes a lot of manpower, a lot of time, strategy to really run a successful scaling program. I love that. I love the fact that you've created this flywheel because often, you know, as an agency owner, we get into affiliate practice and we see that a lot of those six steps are being missed. Maybe only three of them are being done. And it can really make an impact into how the program incrementally grows. And the massive big subject that we talk about quite a lot in this industry, but we need, we need to be focusing on the growth of new partners coming in, new traffic sources being explored, new relationships being built. And it is a constant flywheel. It's those small incremental steps that actually help affiliate managers to grow the program over time, slowly over time. And, you know, this industry is still very much led by relationships. We always say it's relationship led. And the fundamentals of understanding how to build successful partnerships and build successful relationships and understanding what these partners need from you mm-hmm. is stuff that you learn on the job. Like there is no one place to go and learn affiliate marketing. I mean, you're currently building it. But yeah. the other thing to mention, guys, is that the PXA isn't actually only for impact.com customers. Like if you're working in any other network, you can still come and do the courses on the PXA, especially around the kind of discovery module and the, you know, the stuff that isn't linked to the impact platform. And we want people to be accessing this knowledge and using this knowledge because a rising tide raises all ships. You know, the information that we can share and glean with one another is really what makes this industry great. So I want to say thank you for doing that and for, you know, starting this project. But let's talk about some of the common problems that new programs starting out often experience and Like, how have you created the courses in the PXA to help these newer brands overcome some of these problems? What are the thought processes behind how you've structured it? So a lot of it, from a brand perspective, and I do want to caveat this with like, we have trainings for publishers as well. So if you're on the publisher side, that's available to you as well. Mm -hmm. But on the brand and agency side, a lot of it is based on my experience with problems I've had. For example, I used to work for an agency called W Promote. I headed up the affiliate service and came across brands all the time who had misconceptions about affiliate or they didn't really understand the way it ought to be funded or how to Mm. sort of pay it off or what budget would be required. And a lot of it was just around education of what it entails to launch an affiliate program, especially for a brand that's new. Mm. So 
The other thing I always like to tell people is the way you approach your program completely depends on how much awareness your brand has right now. So if the answer is very little and you're a brand new brand or you're trying to launch into a really oversaturated market, you really need to look at it from a PR perspective. Mm -hmm. This needs to begin as an awareness play. Sometimes that means pay to play. If you are a brand that has a lot of awareness or are kind of one of those magical brands where, for example, I was working with, um, during the pandemic, I had a client who was like workout equipment and Mm. it's really like sexy little pill looking dumbbells and like, you know, pastel like rings. Like it was lightning in a bottle because everybody was working out at home. It was very Instagrammable, things like that, where that program, the approach was how do we capitalize on the the buzz that's coming and how do we pick that up faster versus creating the buzz, right? Mm. So it's really, I have found structuring our courses to meet the brand where they are and also meet the manager where they are. So it's really all encompassing. If you're very green to the space, there's a place for you to come in. If you're not, but you need help with a brand that is new to you or a vertical you haven't done before, we have something for you as well. And a lot of that, again, just was coming from things that I ran into in my career that I wish I had had training for in the past that didn't exist. So hopefully people are finding it helpful. Yeah. And I mean, what about people that want to give feedback? Like, are you taking feedback from students that are going through the course and actually saying, hey, this was a problem for me and this happened and all of that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. We welcome lots of feedback. We would love feedback. We There's always like a survey at the end of the course if you take a course. Please leave us feedback. We're always optimizing, especially because our product changes all the time. Like if you're on impact, you know, we have releases constantly. Mm -hmm. So our courses need to match that. And in addition, as the industry evolves, our strategy courses change too, just to kind of keep up with the way things are going. So it's constantly evolving. It's never going to be done. And we will take all the feedback. And what I love the most is being at conferences like at ASW this year, Mm. I had several people come up to me and say, like, we love what you're doing with the Academy. I've taken so many courses. I recognize you. It's just like, it's so fulfilling that it's useful to people. There's nothing we want more. Yeah. I mean, I know that feeling because we obviously have our own coaching program as well for affiliate managers. And it's not tactical trading. It's more the strategic side of affiliate management and how to take the basic principles of marketing and strategy and actually apply them. But It is so fulfilling to know that people are getting access to information that isn't kind of the drivel that comes on the Mm -hmm. internet. Like if you go and search affiliate marketing on YouTube or TikTok or whatever, you can't guarantee that the information that you're getting is actually, you know, strategically sound, written by actual practitioners that know how to do the job. And this is a skilled industry. Like it is ubiquitous now and affiliate marketing is everywhere. It is in every channel. And We're expecting affiliate managers to become experts across every single digital medium, which is becoming a little bit impossible. It really is. So, you know, skills development and training in this industry is is so so important. And you're right, it never your learning never ends because every new channel that comes in, we need to learn how to leverage it and get traffic from it and convert, you know, partners with it. So it's kind of like your learning journey never stops. But at least there's a place now that you can get to that will take you on a path, on a journey with at least the basics in mind, which you then can extrapolate from and actually move into your program. So this isn't a one-stop thing, like you're going to do the PXA and you're never going to learn again. This isn't once and done. Like as you actually coined the phrase, affiliate is not once and done. So leverage the information that is in this and come and learn the basics and get the fundamentals right and then extrapolate from there and actually take it forward and kind of change it and make it into your own. There is so little education in our industry, as we well know. And, you know, tell us why Impact felt that they needed to invest in in the PXA, because it's not actually only for their own clients, it's for anybody that wants to come and learn. So what was the reasoning behind that? Like, what is your like passion for doing the education piece for everybody else in the industry? Yeah, it's for everybody and it's free too. That's the other thing is mm-hmm. it's free. It will free is good. <laughs> free, yeah. Yeah. So, and we, have the, we have the two segments. We have our product courses, obviously, for people that are using the product. Using the plat- and then yeah. we have our strategy courses for platform agnostic, anybody. And the reason was exactly that, because there was no training in the industry or very little. We know, like you said, rising tide rises all ships. Like we want mm-hmm. to, we wanted to give people a place to level up their skill set and grow the industry as a whole because we mm-hmm. all really succeed together. And We wanted to take the opportunity to be thought leaders in the space and kind of put our stamp on 
partnerships education, be the first ones here and really own this sort of this void in the market. Mm. And I think we've done a really good job making that happen so far. Yeah. I mean, people are coming up to you at events and saying how, how much they love it. My question to you is maybe a little bit like personal because I just want to understand what is it that people don't know? Because, you know, when you've been in the industry as long as what I have, like everything is a bit like breathing to you, but then you tell something really simple to somebody else and they like have these wow, aha moments. And you're like, really? Like that wasn't even anything like tactical or anything. It was just like basic information. But because there is such a lack of education, even basic information on how to you know, structure and strategize your program isn't available anyway. So with so much little education in our industry, like I'm interested to ask a question that goes behind the scenes to ask you, what are some of the most watched modules in the academy? Like what has the industry actually looked at and learned within the academy? I mean, can you tell us that? Yeah, I can. Our fundamentals strategy course, really like our 101 affiliate is okay. always going to be our top viewed module. Mm. It just is. But the one that's been picking up a lot of steam lately is I did a TikTok course with our CEO, Dave Ivano recently, just mm. talking about the TikTok affiliate program and strategizing how to kind of incorporate that into your affiliate program. And that's been incredibly popular, which wasn't surprising to me. That's the question I get most often these days is what mm. are we doing with TikTok? And I also have like office hours. If people want to uh, book like 30 minutes to ask me questions, you can do that. So I get that a lot. And people, uh, you know, want to know what's happening with TikTok. How do I use it? And we use it in affiliate. So we made a course around that. And obviously it's a very hot topic. So that one is, I guess, unsurprisingly doing very well right now. But that's quite interesting because the basics of affiliate marketing 101 is obviously, you know, the flagship product. And mm -hmm. it's interesting that it's the one that's picking up the most steam because it just goes to prove what we're talking about. The fact that there is so little education, basic fundamental education in this industry. And I'm really pleased to hear that. I'm pleased to hear that people are taking advantage of the information that's being provided and actually taking that yeah. into their teams and making people watch it. I know my own teams have actually taken quite a lot of the courses mm -hmm. in the PXA as well. So, you know, it's, I always think education is, it needs to be self led but it also needs to be culturally imprinted into your business. So, you know, we make time for our team to actually have learning time, to read news, to understand what's happening in the world around them. And it's also important, you know, that you're getting agnostic training because you have split the training in two. You're getting agnostic training that is, isn't relevant to any product. It's relevant to not even vertical type. It's just basic principles of things that you need to be doing as an affiliate manager. And I think Often those are the things that people get wrong. You know, in the big <laughs> complex programs that we take over and we start to manage and strategize for, we look at the basic fundamentals first and often those are many other times the things that are wrong and that we have to go back yeah. and fix. So, you know, it's really interesting to me that it doesn't surprise me about TikTok either because obviously it's a massive channel that's growing really fast. I'm a big lover of TikTok. Like, I'm not ashamed to say, me you know, do. I, I do the death scroll morning oh, and evening. Yeah. And also it's good to understand how these new channels are coming into our kind of like peripheral vision because like we said earlier, affiliate managers need to be experts across all of these channels in order to actually leverage and grow their programs. And it's almost like the industry is moving so fast, it's difficult for us to keep up. So it's nice Absolutely. that you're looking at like trend-based things and creating like, you know, trainings and content around the things that are trending. So that was interesting. What about the functional usage of the platforms? What are the big, you know, content pieces or, or educational pieces that people are looking at for people that are impact users? It's funny because actually, so we have our full product courses that are lengthy, probably mm. average 45 minutes per sort of phase. But we also offer micro learnings. We call them micro learnings because they're like yeah. 90 seconds or less, pretty much. Yeah. And those far and away crush it because what we have found is people are sitting there and they think, I need to wait, how do I make sure my reversals are happening? Mm. Or yeah. how do I upload that text link? I, I forgot yeah. how to do that. So those really do very well because it's like quick pieces of the software that you need to remember, either learn how to use for the first time or jog your memory, whatever, kind of meeting them exactly where they are in that moment without them having to sit through the 45 minutes of, I, I remember how to do that or I figured that part out. So those really do very well for our product side. But we find that a lot of clients, in terms of taking in entire courses, it's the same kind of concept where the intro to impact is always going to dominate, especially yeah. because it's a light requirement for new clients. I say that because it's not mm -hmm. a real requirement, but we very strongly suggest you take them to get comfortable with the software. So it's yeah. been interesting to see 
the micro learnings really take off. It was a really great idea that we had. And yeah, I love them. I wish I had them. A lot of this stuff is like things I wish I had earlier in my career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other thing about micro learnings is it just goes to show you how short our attention spans are. Like, we really are doing the 30 second, like 90 second, that's about it. So that's quite interesting too. I mean, the one thing that I can say is that impact is a very complex tool. It's like the, like I sometimes refer to it as like the Rolls Royce. It's like, it's got so many components and so many parts. And to really become a true practitioner of using the platform, you kind of do need to have a training system because there's so much data that the platform gives. And I'm, you know, I'm not affiliated to you or anything, but like, so often what happens is that, and it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you're only using like 20% of the actual like usage because you just haven't learned how to become a practitioner of the platform. So it's, mm-hmm. quite, it's quite great that you've kind of built the training programs to really help people leverage the power that sits behind the tool and yeah. also ensure that they know that they might be missing out on things. I was actually on with Todd Crawford just last night, actually, and we were talking about the contribution report that you have. And it, report. it is a really good report. And, and if you haven't ever seen it, maybe just give the audience a little bit of an understanding of what the contribution report does. Yeah, so it's part of our optimized reporting suite. And it essentially breaks down the contribution by partner in mm. terms of the consumer journey. So for any given time period, how often is each partner the first stop on the journey, somewhere in the middle or somewhere at the end? or the end, or how often are they driving it by themselves, which is really useful information when you're determining how to compensate your partners and the way that you want to structure your work with them moving forward. There are a lot of decisions that come out of this report, and I think most brands kind of look at it and they're not really sure what to do with it. But if you want to change up the way that you're sort of compensating your partners, this is the best way to do it, is to understand the weight that they're carrying where they are coming in and out of giving conversions. And it gets a lot deeper, right? Like we can go Mm. into how long they were with each partner and things like that. But just getting a general understanding of where each partner is playing the biggest role in the consumer journey really can inform a lot about the way that you structure your program and make it as incremental as possible. We won't get onto incrementality because that would be a whole other podcast. (laughs) But the next question I had for you was, what do you think the biggest part of the partnership life cycle is that's often missed or worse, even ignored? The, in my opinion, the engage phase. I think okay. people don't understand that you have to talk to your publishers regularly mm-hmm. to get the coverage you want. I come across brands all the time. This is another reason why I think PXA is so important is because more often than not, brands are kind of throwing the affiliate program at somebody in marketing yeah. who might not know anything about it mm-hmm. and don't understand that this could be often somebody's full-time job or an entire team. Like if you look at Fanatics, they have a giant team for affiliate. So it really can be that large and they just kind of give it to somebody who maybe has a couple hours a week to dedicate. And they think that they can just send a couple invitations to the program and boom, we're going to scale. Your publisher might not know anything about your brand. You have to educate them on what you're selling and why and tell them how much commission and and tell them you can negotiate. And if you're open to placements and things like that, the communication aspect is so, so, so important when it comes to growing your program that a lot of times people don't have time or Mm -hmm. realize it was going to take time. I think that's really important to have people understand is you need to spend the time educating your publishers on your brand, on your product, allowing them to negotiate so that the partnership is mutually beneficial that whole engagement piece is just why this channel can never be fully automated also. Well, the but, other thing as well is that I think people are scared to engage because they feel like they're intruding. But honestly, like affiliates are expecting you to engage with them to totally. give them the information because they don't have the time to engage with you. Right. So like often it is, it's like, oh, I can just build a final sequence of emails. Mm, no, you kind of need to be reaching out to people and actually meeting them at events and like building that rapport because you need to be able to stand out from everybody else that's competing in the same like, channel as you. Totally. So let's move on to kind of the future of affiliate marketing and what's changing because obviously you're quite hot on the trends so you can keep the training up to date. But in particular, relation to program management and how should brands be investing in training their teams longer term? What do you think the trends are that are coming up in, in this regard? The thing that I see a lot now, and it's just escalated, is mm. everybody wants to be on content site. Content is king. And a lot of times, especially now more than ever, I'm getting a lot of requests for upfront costs to Mm -hmm. it's becoming a very pay-to-play 
place because mm-hmm. content sites are starting to know that it's so valuable in affiliate. Yeah. They're catching on. And so brands, you know, on its face, affiliate is a CPA-based channel. And this kind of goes against that. But mm-hmm. if if content is really what you want and it's a big goal and your brand, if you're in the awareness place, right? You have to kind of wrap your mind around the pay-to-play aspect of it at times. It's something that we're all going to have to get on board with as we move forward. And we see the same thing with the convergence of influencer marketing too, because a lot of brands want to bring influencer into their affiliate structure and that's all fine and good. But if the influencer has never worked with you before, you might have to pay an upfront cost first for sort of sponsored coverage. And then it becomes that CPA longer term relationship. PR is the same. So that's something that I think brands are starting to understand and maybe need to understand more is you pay to get in the door and then the partnership will continue to scale on a CPA basis. So a lot more diversification in terms of the commercials that we're going to be offering. I think that's going to become more standard. What about in relation to like affiliate managers doubling down and becoming experts? Because we've now got partnership, like there's so many different titles in our industry in terms of what is an affiliate manager? What is there is, where does the responsibility begin and end? Like, do you think that there's going to be any doubling down in terms of areas of specialism? Because that's something that I think is coming. That's simply because we can't expect these poor affiliate managers to take on any more. Like, like they need to be SEO experts, pay-per-click experts, paid media experts, influencer experts. Like, how much more do you want to pile into one person? It's impossible for them to know everything. So it's great that you're doing these courses when, like, big trends are happening and, and just giving the basics and the fundamentals. But do you think that we're going to actually see, like, a split into, like, partnerships, you know, performance and, and then maybe like content being like a like traditional affiliates basically and then non-traditional. Like how do you think that's going to work and change in the future? It's really interesting. I think what I would like to see happen is we, I would love there to be a space for affiliate managers to become just partnerships managers that yeah. can kind of be jack of all trades with influencer, with PR, with SEO more of like a digital marketing specialist, right? Like I think it's becoming that because that's what's being expected because I think there's just so much convergence with these other channels now that the Mm -hmm. way that affiliate managers, even when I was at Levi's, like strictly on affiliate and influencer and that was it. Like that's not happening anymore. So I almost feel like it's going to go away in the sense of it's going to just become a sort of partnership ecosystem. It already is a partnerships ecosystem where people can tackle all of the things, but it is a lot, right? So how do you Mm. specialize? And that'll be up to the brands to kind of determine who sits where and what they're doing. But because it just depends, like some brands really have a heavy focus on SEO and they have a fully built out SE team, but affiliate managers should understand how that works to a certain extent so they can optimize their content, things like that. Mm. So I think it's going to vary brand by brand. And I think agencies are going to thrive. They have all the pieces and different sort of people in different seats that work together. And it's going to be really beneficial just having people work together in close quarters. I think you're right on that because I am seeing it. The tide is turning with ages. There was a period and it's cyclical, right? Like, so, I mean, I've been in the industry two decades. Like I've seen a lot of the history, but there was a time when it was like, oh no, I don't want to have an agency. I want to bring it all in-house. Yeah. And the problem with in-house is that you don't get the depth and breadth that an agency sees. Like I manage, you know, 10 to 15 clients at any given time. I'm seeing a length and breadth of how everybody performs across a cross section of the industry that you can't see internally. Like even with all the best data in the world, you can only see your own data and how that impacts. And so I think that there's a resurgence in people coming back to agencies and saying, you know, help us with the strategy, plug into our team, become part of that partnerships experience and leverage the data and the insights and things that you know and that you see and help us to improve. So we're getting a lot of clients asking us for that, which is great. Like, it's great news for agencies. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, investing in the longer term, continuous educational training is something that we have to be doing in this industry. So yeah. it's great that you've kind of started that ball rolling and, and got the academy up and are kind of promoting it out to people. And again, we just want to say that it's not only for people using Impact. Like, you can still come and do the strategy courses and get access to some of the knowledge base that's there without being an impact client. So this isn't like only for impact clients, it's for everybody. And I think that's really great too. So I want to congratulate you on building a really great academy and sharing that with the world and, you know, taking your passion and your joy and putting it into the work that you're doing because it really does shine through. And it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on this podcast, Cody. So thank you so much for lifting the lid 
behind <laughs> what's in PXA and, you know, sharing it out with people in our community and into our industry. And I hope that you guys will, you know, take a bold move and go and take one or two of the training courses and give some feedback and, and really participate and make sure yep. that your teams are being educated too. Looking forward to seeing the next big bold thing that you develop. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Please check out the Partnerships Experience Academy. Find us at any conference. Come say hi. We're happy to chat anytime. This podcast has been brought to you by AMP, Affiliate Manager Performance Program. The Affiliate Manager Performance Program is designed for ambitious affiliate managers working at brands, agencies, or affiliate networks. This 12-week on-demand video coaching program is for those practitioners who want to scale their affiliate program and improve their affiliate partner performance. Affiverse has trained over 200 affiliate managers from companies like Microsoft, OmniSend, AstroPay, IQ Option, PokerStars, Betson, OxyLabs, and ConvertKit will help you build consistent sales and trusted affiliate partnerships. Plus, you can join our live Ask Me Anything sessions as you work through the weekly video content entirely at your own pace. Learn proven tactics, tried and tested strategies, and access decades of experience from industry veterans who have launched scaled and grown multi-million dollar affiliate programs around the world. To find out more, visit affiversetraining.com and get started growing your affiliate program with AMP today.